Welcome back to week five, day five of the LPL, coming in here with our second game between FPX and LGD in LGD's home arena, but yet to find a single win in the last two days as they come into their second series here, into their second game against FPX. Now, I don't know what it's going to take for LGD to turn this one around because it seems like there's just so many problems across the board, but what we can say is good stuff out from FPX, you know, capitalizing on those mistakes and also out from Bing, you know, picks up the Azir once more and has a redeeming performance. Yes, we really have to talk about this new rookie mid laner a little bit. Uh, he had one of the worst performances on Azir in one of the games, mm -hmm. and after that he actually stopped playing Azir for a while. His team actually just put him onto Leo for four consecutive games. It's so good to see him have that type of type of performance, pick up man of the match, and get yep. confidence back in himself. So there will be more Azirs coming up. Right? Exactly. You know, he went back to the training camp and was able to uh, put some practice time in on that champion and looked super good in that game. You know, picking up the MVP was unkilled in the match as well, but at the same time he had a frontline who was just able to lock every target down in front of him, and he just essentially just needed the right click for most of that game because everyone was just lined up in front of him. We saw some incredible combos coming in from the team that that double knockup into the triple knockback as well was pretty clean. It was very brutal and for LGD, this is the time where I need to see some coaching coming because the team was... They're making mistakes that no player should really make. Yeah. PYL especially, the face checking. Like, Frostcurrent loves to say this. It should be a feature of a pro player that they face check without a sweeper on. That's mm -hmm. just inexcusable from PYL right there. So I, I need to see some focus coming out from this team. Yeah, exactly, because it really was a lot of individual mistakes coming out there as well, and also team mistakes as, as well, trying to make stuff happen into the bottom lane, and Pepper, it was very binary coming out from him as well, after a point he was just like, well, I'll just, I guess, I guess I'll just keep going to the bottom lane, because it keeps working, so why not just keep ganking the bottom lane, lane gank after lane gank after lane gank, and continue to get kills. And this is a problem I see from LGD that sometimes I feel like Amy, especially, could help his laners set up vision. He, he really is a lot of a stay in his own jungle until he can find mm. a gank type of guy. But in that scenario, when there has been kills going on in the bot lane, you do need your other team members to come up and set up vision, especially in that bottom side brush. Mm. Basically, what Pepper... Uh, was allowed to do was just sit there and wait for the enemy team to come to him and he got a first gank every single time. That shouldn't be allowed to happen. If your bot lane can't do it alone, call someone else. You yeah. have the roaming top, you have the roaming mid, you have Zach as well, they can help you out, but you need that communication to make it work. Yeah, and we did see you know a pivot there as well because we were saying well, surely he's going to path towards top side. Uh, Kled takes electrocute right here, so it's likely they're going to put pressure onto him, but if bot lane's working, why not just keep going down there? And also, it didn't really matter in the end because Gimgun wasn't facing a lane opponent. For the most part, Jinny was either roaming, he was trying ultimates, crashing into Talia walls, and then Gim, Gim was able to just have free time with the tower. Yeah, it was a really weird scenario. I don't think we've ever seen a game like that for a single top laner. He basically got the tower against nobody, mm -hmm. and then he was able to roam and take a herald yep. again against and then no he other top as well, laner. And he went and almost killed mid. Yeah, so yep. he didn't use any teleports, he just stayed topside and was able to out impact yeah. Scion. That's the that's the top lane's <laughs> dream right there. When you don't have a lane opponent, uh, you can just have free time with the tower. You kill the tower. Uh -huh. You can do whatever you want. You can carry on pushing the top lane. You can walk into the jungle. You can take away a camp. You can go mid lane. You can help the team maybe. You don't even need to see the team if you don't want because you're massive because you're cled. Yeah, so it's uh, pretty good times to be honest. Yeah, and I'm uh, harping about this point because I want to see LGD go back on something that made them very successful when they were facing Rogue Wars mm -hmm. in RNG. It was the Jinu in the top lane. When they had those wins, it was because they could punish people like Mouse, punish people like Let Me at the time, yeah. who weren't very good into those bruiser type of matchups. Uh, maybe they have more confidence in Jinu and let him play like a 1v1 against mm -hmm. that top lane and go back to something that they have been successful on. And I feel like at this point you might as well, right? Because it, say like bot lane goes even, like you need uh, at least one power point in the map. And yes, you're facing on Gimgun, who is very strong in zone right, but I would love just to see a carry matchup in the top lane, you know, because we have we have players in the LPL who do that. We see like the Shy come out, like very strong mechanical top lane. And so why not just do it? Why not just challenge him? We saw the Riven yesterday, just like bring something out. We know that you can play carries. Definitely. And LGD in the previous game, they had the red side. If they had the red side last pick and they got a Fiora, that matchup would look very, very different. Like mm. he, this guy does have counters, Jinu, no as the immortal sword by the Chinese fans here. He has a lot of champions that nobody else really plays, the Riven, yep. the Fiora, and he's very good at them. Can we see a return to form from LGD and really shift the attention to the top lane? It's actually one of the few times you can say Fiora is a contested pick in a matchup <laughs> here because it very much is playing around that top side. But for FPX, they, they really have to play around top side. They, like, they, they can just kind of yeah. stall <laughs> out Jinu, right, if he goes for a carry and be like, well, 
we'll just have Pepper invade jungle. Like, if Amy's gonna be like a herbivore, then we'll just send him in, murder him, and then like bot lane will try and win as well. Mid lane, we saw Bing was able to pick up a performance on the Zir. He wasn't just on a control mage and like roaming around the map, he could also just hold his own in mid lane. I really like how uh, neutral the signs were right there. LGD versus uh, FBX fighting. Which is, uh, I, I like yep. those signs. I like those fans. Simple, you know? sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing crazy. I like the memes, to be honest. Um, we get a lot of good Chinese memes. I always need you to uh, translate them, because oh, I'm really happy, happy to help right here. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, is there anything offensive really about wanting to win the game, to be honest, coming out there? And, you know, FPX have looked more cohesive from week to week. They were a team that we were looking at, and it was just like, well, they make these incremental increases in terms of how good they are. But at a certain point, uh, we just kind of, they lost the arms race because everyone else was getting so good so fast. But now able to face down teams in the Eastern Conference who we look towards, who may, aren't the names of like WE, you know, EDG, like you can start picking up wins. That's exactly what they have done. And I think a reasonable position for FPX to really be is kind of that third or fourth place playoff team in, uh, in the West. I, I do think if this team grows up, they have a very good chance of beating teams like BLG. Mm -hmm. Now, BLG, they have been around for a lot. We know what to kind of expect from this team. But FPX, they are still growing. So it might not be this split, but in future splits, I would actually see this team kind of go into that position. For sure, and in terms of like a first split team, because not all of these players are particularly new to the LPL, but the team itself is, if they stick together, like that's a very interesting thing to watch for down the line. But we are gonna get into Champion Select number two between LGD and FPX. It will be a Rakan and a Draven ban in from LGD and a Tam Kench and a Riven ban towards Genius. So it only feels like FPX are thinking down the same line that we are here, Clever. Yeah, we definitely could see uh, LGD's coach right there, Hart moving over to uh, to Jinu and patting him on the back. It's like, this game's on you, man. Don't <laughs> drop it. And then Riven gets banned, so he'll have to go elsewhere, maybe looking towards the Fiora now. Uh, Rise the ban here against Bing, and looking towards the final ban from FPX. It's actually going to be the Azir that Bing played last game. Okay, very interesting bans. Usually FPX does ban out the Zoe because that's a champion that Bing himself does not play. Mm. One of the few LPL mid laners that doesn't touch that champion. So they are giving up a lot of, uh, it, of, uh, of power over mm. to LGD. For sure, 64% win rate in the LPL. Zoe is still a powerhouse on 8.2 right here. Do it, Gimgoon. <laughs> We, we know uh, you want to. Kim Goon, are, are you okay up there? <laughs> I, I don't think either Wukong or uh, Urgot are in meta right now. No, but he has also played Urgot this split, so it's not out of the realms of true, possibility. True. But Definitely I don't want true. you to first pick. Definitely don't blind pick that. Uh, Kalista will be coming in here for LWX into the bottom lane. Did well last game, and it will also be the Alistair, so the tried and true once more. Very strong duo right there is able to uh, synergize very well with any jungler with a little bit of CC. So they have their win condition kind of set up for them already. They have a very strong bot lane that can go all in and level six. On the opposite side, LGD locking in the Vladimir actually. So likely that will go into the top lane here with Zoe locked in already and the Varus towards Imp as well. So also a takeaway from Gim Moon since has pretty much played uh, only Vladimir. Finally, an evolution from LGD's draft. I was harping about on them about this. They don't pick up the virus soon enough in a lot of their drafts. They are doing it now, and that's going to give them a okay matchup in the bot lane. They aren't going to instantly fall. Yeah, good stuff coming out from them. So FPX now back over to them. They are hovering the Scion. This would be more of a neutral matchup, just well into the Vladimir, especially if you want to pick up an early banner of command. There's essentially nothing that Vladimir can do right there. It will be locked in. So likely going towards Gimgoon, unless we see a mid lane Scion. That is something that has been cropping up here and there. Mid lane Scion. Ooh, that's a it's that's spicy. A very special one. Yes, I can definitely see it though, just because he has so much wave pushing potential and no one that can really kill him. So yeah. I, I could see it work right there. The Vladimir into the uh, Scion matchup. Uh, the wave clear is still going to go on the side of Scion, and uh, Vladimir basically has to wait for the late game team fights to kind of show his impact. Yeah, it's more on 8.4 though that we see mid lane Scion, so I'm going to have to wait a little bit longer in the LPL until we see that really happen. But uh, Talia going to be the ban here for LGD again, trying to knock out Bing's champion pool, so he has no Azir, no Talia. We'll have to go elsewhere in this game. Also, no Rise on top of that. Uh, Braum, a ban towards PYL, and the Skana at Amy. On the flip side, there really is nothing up for PYL anymore. The three of his most played champions are gone Tom Kench, Braum, and Rakan. Uh, 
it's going to be very interesting to see what he goes to because he will have to pull out something new. Yep, LeBlanc the final ban against Binks. They really are just smashing his champion uh, pool right now, trying to really graft FPX's uh, composition around that. 15 seconds left and looking towards LWX to pick up something for his team here. Now Zahar is still up. That's been the traditional counter to the Zoe we've seen. Uh, we've seen Doinbee pick that up. We have indeed Camille making it very far down the pick and bans right here, but looks to be the lock in. Nope, last second will be the Galio. So we completely forgot about Galio. He's still open, so that will go towards the mid lane here for Bing. Uh, Galio is always quite a queasy pick for me. Uh, when I see FPX run it and they have done it before, it's. To be honest, it's been the worst Galio play we've seen in the LPL so far. Not a lot of coordination. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, over the Chinese Dewar, they have been able to perfect this pick, but it's not something in the past that they've done well on. But Camille definitely in the minds of LGD now will instantly lock that one in over to Amy. And it's going to be a Leona into the bottom lane here for PYL. Currently 71% win rate in the LPL. Five out of seven games won so far. Okay, uh, that pick is, it's a very all or nothing pick, the Leona. You, you yeah. basically go in and if it doesn't work out the first few times you get your initiation on, then it doesn't work for the rest of the game. And you're also running it into an Alistar, so unless there's a lot of very good mechanical play from PYL, that's kind of a risky pick. Yeah, it's very hard playing into the Alistar who can pulverize you almost out of the air as well into the Xenoblade, has the headbutt as well if he jumps onto the AD carry. Like, it's all going to have to be pre-6 pressure as well, you know, once level 6 gets hit by Kalistra and Alistair, there's even more ways to get out of Leona's engage, so it's uh, it's definitely a risk here, but if Amy can get involved into the bottom lane, it's potential to snowball the bottom. Now, when we're, whenever we talk about Zoe, we talk about the 2v2 duo in the mid and the jungle, and so far LGD do have a early game advantage, so to speak. If they can get the uh, Camille and the Chain CC with the Zoe, they can very easily pick off Pepper. So that's something that Pepper will have to be aware of. Yeah, Pepper has picked up Rengar as well to round out the roster here from FPX. Uh, typically plays a lot of uh, Kha'Zix, but has gone towards the Rengar this time around. And then we're looking to uh, try and aggress in that early game once more. Rengar and Galio is a duo we have been seen run. Uh, w has ran this a couple of times with Condi. What you want to do is you want the Rengar to finish his ultimate jump and then the Galio ults to fall down. Now, I will say FBX has run this as well. However, they don't necessarily wait for the, uh, the Rengar to yeah. jump. And that's been a problem for them. So <laughs> hopefully they have perfected this composition. They did run it once and they were like, okay, this isn't working. So they stopped, but now they're back at it again. I hope it works for them. But this is the second time Time we're seeing FPX try something that didn't happen or work out last time they played it. Like Bing, we all remember that uh, her honestly horrendous play in the mid lane. Oh, yeah. Like I feel like even Bing has to laugh at himself and that one misses all of his abilities on the AZ and is like, okay, I'm not playing this pick ever again. Picks up today, does incredibly well with it. So this is FPX once again trying something that didn't work. Hopefully they can make it happen once more. It is a lot about practice and confidence and something in the LPL that's unique to any other region is that these teams have the least amount of time to practice. It's really interesting I was, I was able to talk to Stake a little bit over the Chinese New Year, and he says, well, basically, you know what every LPL team is doing because they're almost playing every day. So scouting has been uh, surprisingly easy for him. <laughs> okay, okay. Interesting stuff as we get into our second game here between FPX, Fun Plus Phoenix, and LGD. And see if FPX can make it in 2-0 and zero sweep here against LGD. That would make it a 4-0 and zero sweep over these last two days for LGD in their home arena. They played back-to-back -back games. And FPX definitely looking for their third win in a row right now. The first they've had all split. Well, that's unfortunate. Ward goes down, Ward turn into a zombie ward. Another ward comes out from Gimgoon right there just to protect the top side of the map. It was a very mild manner uh, invade from LGD. They didn't even try to drop a ward into the red buff, so they won't know precisely where Rengar actually starts. Well, they got the ward. That's pretty much all they really wanted, so now they'll just uh, back away. Yeah, I, I don't like this because what it allows Pepper to do is take his red and just path around it. So they drop the ward right in front of him and they drop no other wards. So yep. it, it's a ward that, yes, you do have it, but you can also get yourself played by it. Sure. Like you played yourself. <laughs> Yeah, unfortunate, but uh, yeah, Pepper will get his red buff start here. Likewise, on the opposite side will be Jinu, helping out Amy on his blue buff. will be packing towards the bottom side of the map here, you'd have to think. It'll be a uh, Vladimir and Sion matchup in the top lane, so hopefully Sion can get that early push on into that Vladimir. Okay, so uh, Pepper deciding to uh, not play anything uh, 
overplay his hand, just walks straight into the Raptors, even though he knows there's a ward there, so showing himself on the map pretty early on. Just taking a look at some of the keystones, the Unseal Spellbook on the Galio, the Zoe, and also the Vladimir. I can see Aftershock on Leona, basically has a uh, war Eclipse now. At level 1, uh, Leona, I believe you can go up to 117 armor if you have Eclipse, um, so Aftershock, and your base armor. Now we are seeing an early roam come out from Bing right here, just trying to get a little bit more vision, protect the pathing from uh, Pepper. Yeah, he's got that level 3. We'll be uh, taking his anger out on this crab now. And look towards this bottom side of the map. Uh, he's gone Domination himself, has gone towards the Electrocute. Also Inspiration second. And Amy's going to find him. But uh, uh, Pepper does have the jump right okay. here, quite literally, as Amy's going to take a lot of damage from this one. He's Amy's not winning this trade. Here. Misses the Q, but in comes Bing, Flash, Auto Attack. I mean, that was honestly just Amy taking a fight that he cannot win. That was, uh, that was very odd. <laughs> so, the, the reason I'm saying this is because they they saw Pepper's pathing. They know that he's probably going to be around this yep. area. And Amy still jumps in blindly towards the river where Rengar could be clearing Scuttle. Uh, that just seems odd to me. <laughs> Especially if you jump in with uh, Hookshot, you're not getting out. There's yeah. like, you, you've essentially just sealed your death sentence if Rengar's there. You know, the... Uh, the renaissance of Rengar after he was heavily nerfed uh, was really because of that scuttle, because he could stack up ferocity in the river. Mm. And uh, right there you could see uh, what that does for a Rengar. Yeah, pretty much. He was like, nice, I'm, uh, I'm into a fight, I've got bush control, and I have full stacks. I've got red buff! So there's actually just zero way that I lose this. That's going to be first blood in the game over to Pepper, which as well, when you look at FPX, it's like, who would be possibly the worst person to give first blood to? Probably Pepper, uh, because he's going to get that damage done. All in, engage into the in. bottom lane. Imp getting chased down by LWX. Jumps into the Bastrion's well. vision, but great Ren coming out there. Looks to back away with the teleport coming down. PYL and Amy need to try and get out of dodge right now. The bowler lands, but can't really get the follower, but it's still yet another kill to FPX. Alistar able to get a lot of damage before Imp could really react. PYL, even though he did go on to the enemy ADC, he was too slow. He was like two seconds too slow. Yeah. So there was already a lot of auto attacks coming out from Chris, and they win that 2v2 quite handedly. Yeah, PYL trying to be a good support right here and block the minion wave. And looks to engage onto uh, Crisp as well. In comes the teleport into the bottom main. In comes Yuki. And Crisp wants to get out of this one, but he will die. Gimkun also uh, into the Kim play, Kun. but doesn't cancel. Gimkun. So now he's going to have to make the long trek back to his tower. I don't think he's going to make it. Uh, why did he finish his teleport again? One of the great mysteries of life, Clement. I, I guess he just wanted to show Jinu how fun it is to play a lane 1v nothing. Ah, right, because he got the chance to do it last game. Yeah. Right. Yeah, well, that's pretty unfortunate. Um, that's going to be a huge amount of time that Jinu's going to get into the top lane now to farm, push in the minion wave, massive loss to Game Goon, plus doesn't have the teleport to get back into the lane now. Um, so pretty much all of that advantage that we saw in the early game out from the FP FPX has, for the most part, been uh, equalized. Uh, pretty much, but they're going back on Amy again. Uh, Bing did not go back to base. Smart play by Amy yeah. right there. Good Drops ward. the ward. Yuki was also coming off to the side as well. They almost knew that this was going to happen. Lots of damage coming in from that Paddle Star, and Pepper really wants to get out. Flash comes after, and Amy looks for the engage right here. Yuki was already just poking him away. Uh, I don't know, man. <laughs> Amy's playing really <laughs> off tilt today. Uh, th there's just so many mistakes from these teams being played right here. Uh, it really is going to be about who can right the ship and yeah. start to steady their teammates. Because well, this is... This is pretty low-level play, to be honest. I mean, this is the LPL, you know, at the end of the day, it's just like trying to force mistakes, and whoever makes the least mistakes at the end of the day will win, but we're just seeing back-to-back, -back, like, phase checks and just random plays coming out from these players, which we don't even do really see. Like, it seems like everyone's just gone insane on stage. Yeah, it really is kind of the FPX effect. It is, yeah. They, they Sometimes they feed so rapidly that the other team just throws up. Right. Um, and right. it, you can see it on LGD. Like LGD are thinking, oh, this is gonna be. This is you could be a walk in the park. Yeah, uh, it's, it's the same yeah, thing they right. did with uh, Jing Dong. Actually, uh, they, they they actually did three plays they in a row. Them into oblivion. Yeah, and then uh, Yaga got super cocky, and they were able to punish. I can't say ever in my uh, history of casting League of Legends I've ever seen a team look for that strategy, <laughs> uh, but it's working. They're currently <laughs> on a two series winning streak, and this will be their third, right, Clement? So, I mean. If it works, level 6 here, Pepper comes in. Can Galio wait for the jump? He 
before Does. he jumps onto Imp, and that's all in the combo looking way better. Splattered against the windshield. Goodbye, Imp. He's completely annihilated by Bing. Always love it when a Gallio Ultimate gets the kill. Yeah, very well done there. And it does seem like FVX did practice this combo. They didn't look very good on it before, but now that was perfection. Yeah, up until recently, uh, Amy had 17 farm and Pepper had 53. Uh, so that was the difference in the jungle here. So significantly behind the mark, just Ding's level 4. Uh, he's now looking for the invade to try and get this red buff, trying to accelerate back towards Pepper. But that's a two level difference in the jungle. That culminates into the bottom lane play and a tower now coming in for FPX. Yeah, and that really takes a lot of power away from Zoe. What Zoe is most known for is picking off the enemy jungler in their own territory. But now that Amy is two levels behind, I don't think he can go into Pepper's jungle anymore. Yeah, Amy pretty much just got annihilated by that uh, red buff. So he'll have to go back to base and Pepper will get his own red buff on the opposite side of the map. And then we'll start pathing towards the mid lane right here as well. So FPX managing to right the ship right there, pick up two more kills and the tower, able to slingshot themselves into the lead once more. 2,400 gold at just eight minutes. So if PYL is going to have an effect on this game, he's really going to have to be very, very proactive. They have to look for fights where they outnumber the enemy team by a lot because at this point, he's just not going to do anything anymore in that 2v2. Uh, it, it really is going to be up to LGD to kind of roam and minimize their tower losses while getting the most kills because that's the only way they stabilize this game. There is always the Zoe effect though. Zoe has two kills in this game, early game, which means that she'll be hitting like a truck, especially onto these squishy targets. Uh, but there are actually that many targets. There is Pepper, LWX, uh, Bing will get to the point where he's relatively tanky. So there are two targets which will explode on contact with Paddle Star, but. Uh, he really just needs to thread the needle to try and get those kills. Yeah, and he's going to have to do them pretty much by himself. I don't really see Amy helping him setting up those type of kills. So if he's going to have to do it, it's going to be a solo effort. Yeah. So hopefully he can snowball this early lead that he has, because that is one of the victory conditions in here from LGD. I'm looking towards that uh, top side of the map in this river, because Pepper and Crisp are looking for this invade. Let me teleport back to the mid lane for Yuki. Not going to be his actual summoner teleport. It will just be one that he picked off the ground, of course. And this is going to put a lot of pressure on LGD's top lane. Even though Bing doesn't have his teleport, he still is a Galio with control of the lane. So if Pepper wants to overload this side, they could do Ooh, it. Oh, Pepper instantly seeing three people after him. In comes the ultimate out from Bing. And Crisp also looking to block off the path. But Amy's almost already dead. Goes Very down into the time. stopwatch. And another stopwatch out from Pepper. We'll keep him alive. Bing. And uh, PYL now has to try and find that kill and will indeed do it. That's a one for one trade on junglers, but the Hema play comes down. Chase down onto Yuki as well. He All gets out of there and that's a kill onto LWX. And this is turning the way of LGD momentarily because Jinny was caught in the middle of three players. A three for two trade all in all. So a 10 person team fight before 10 minutes. That was just the Rift Herald popping up and saying, hey, you guys are doing this a bit early, don't you think? <laughs> Teleports coming down from both, uh, from all of the solo lanes basically coming into that fight. But the main thing was I, Amy just under leveled here and also a, uh, a stopwatch coming out from Pepper allowing FPX to pick up the first kill in this fight. They did have a very good run when they took out LWX. So the only damage left was the Galio, which doesn't really output that much damage, but uh, uh, you could see that Imp was kind of zoned out of the fight, stuck on top of this ledge, couldn't walk through this uh, this chokehold, and Yuki also dies pretty early on. Yeah, I will say just Amy seems tilted in this early game. He had the ultimate, uses it coming out of the perfect timing. Could have used it to dodge the Galio ultimate, which probably would have uh, made that trade go very, very differently right there. That was a really good flash from Pepper because if Amy just instantly ulted him in the middle of river, that would give Yuki a much shorter distance and yep. they could have picked up the kill right then and there. But good mechanical play from Pepper really drags the team fight out until the other members of the FPX can arrive. Yeah, good stuff out from uh, out from Pepper in the end, able to draw them into that trap. But that was LGD trying to make that proactive play right there, and it was yet another kill over to Yuki as he got that one down onto LWX. So the Zoe is still meant to at least keep even with being in the middle lane. Uh, Bing was also able to pick up those three kills, so uh, he is still going to be a pretty major damage threat as this game goes on. But Essentially, he just needs to keep getting kills. Like, he needs to keep trying to ride this wave because over time, FPX are just going to get ahead in terms of gold. Yeah, and it's more about uh, just Yuki. I also think that Amy needs to really start getting back into the game. You're picking a Triforce jungler, mm -hmm. and if you don't snowball early, you 
basically have no effect. You don't even live long enough for your Hextech ultimatum to even make a difference in team fights. Once you die, that falls yeah. off. So he's already 2,000 gold behind Pepper. He, he needs to pick up more of these assists and fights. Once again, looking for the pick in this river, but it's going to be the combo once again. Great knockout out from Bing, and Chris is trying to zone away Imp right now. It's going to be the kill down onto Amy. Imp has to flash the wall, and PYL now on the retreat as well. Chris looking for the disengage. And that was actually a lot uh, a lot more insurance on FPX's side. Even if Pepper was about to fall down, they still had the Fates call unused. So it, it was very, very safe from uh, from. Pepper right there. So they knew that LG would most likely collapse onto them. They had all the planning done beforehand. Yeah, Riff Hell now being attempted here from FPX, but they also see the blue buff. So that's going to be the prize before they look towards the objective. And Harold wants in too as well. Uh, being around the corner, just able to uh, look for the zone if Yuki looks to uh, try to contest this one and also able to pick up the blue buff himself. And Pepper will now start to move back towards the Herald here. Yeah, FPX just goading out all the plays from LGD. They know what they're going to do. They know how they can avoid the deaths going in. Uh, Pepper, you know, saving off his four stacks ferocity for the uh, for the cleanse, yep. for the gray health, able to walk away very easily. I actually think they're probably doing this on purpose, you know. They're they're walking through like LGD vision and telling them, "Hey, he's here. You can try to all in on him." It's and a they, then they have the Galio fallen. Yeah. yeah. It might actually be the case, you know, FPX it feels like once they get their groove on in the early game, they they snowball very well. Like they have the next steps, and it's not in like a in like a Sunin gaming type of way, but it's just like they play with a lot of confidence, um, and they just look like a different team. You know, when FPX fall behind early, usually is around the jungle position. Like it's such a coin flip, uh, but when it goes badly, it just kind of spirals. Uh, but once they get ahead, it spirals in a good way. Yeah. So for FPX, uh, they. When they snowball, they look very good. Yeah. The problem with from us is always about how do they do recovery? Because that's their big problem so far in the LPL. If they fall behind early at 10 minutes, if Pepper has a bad play, they don't usually get back on their feet. They force more plays. And LWX is one person that really kind of forces that narrative because he's the person that can scale into the late game, the highest DPM player in the previous split. But he's a lot of times all too willing to take bad fights as well. That's going to be the one thing they want to improve on. The other thing that we had a lot of problems with him was being in the mid lane, but so far he's been looking good. True. LWX is a, a player, especially in the AD carry role, who I feel like enters melee range far too often for an AD carry. I, I feel like he's trying to hit them with his whatever he's using in the AD carry role. Maybe just give him Master Yi in future. Just give him a, an AD carry who is a melee AD carry. Maybe he'll do really well. He's uh, my least favorite Ezreal player. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can say that with a lot of confidence. Hey, if you're right next to them, is it possible to miss a skill shot like Mystic Shot? That is true, but if you are his teammates, he'll also give you a headache. So. True. <laughs> uh, always arcane shifting forward. Never backwards. Yeah. It is fun to watch, though. Uh, and the LWX does still put out numbers. Uh, it's interesting because he's meant to kind of be like the late game insurance for FPX, right? But once you get to the late game and he has all these items, then it, it's a 50-50. They're doing it again. They're baiting it's him. It's literally <laughs> the same place over and over again, and PYL's falling for it. They are actually baiting the team. A big with a triple taunt coming in oh, here. Oh and my god, off. Imp, where did he even go? In comes Pepper as well. Ultimatum comes down, but Amy wants to instantly flash away right into the open arms of Gimgoon. Decimating Smash, he falls. Triple kill to FPX. This reminds me of like Jurassic Park 3 when the raptors are, you know, toying with the guy down uh -huh. below in the brush. Yeah. FPX are the raptors, <laughs> you know. They they can they are actually just baiting LGD out. They know their tendencies so well. They know they can't help themselves but go down the tree and help their teammates and try to pick up a kill and they get instantly punished for it. But it's the same place, Clement. It's not even like a creative <laughs> new play. Like it's the exact same spot in the top river three times. Well, I guess if you're a raptor, humans really aren't that smart to you. True. So, I mean, this has definitely proven it, but that what a taunt out from Bing. Oh, that was a great play. Look at the damage coming out from Galio. Pretty much all three members at half health before any members even lay a hand on them. And Amy just been so ineffectual this game. Camille, she can be a great jungler in her own right, but you do have to snowball early. And that first kill going over to Rengar so carelessly has really set the tone for this game. Really did. Big snowball, but in the opposite direction here in the drone go on. That's going to be the banner of command picked up as well from Gimgoon. One of, uh, I was, I'd probably say Vladimir's worst nightmare. Uh, yeah. Nightmare. Yeah. That's why all the counters we've seen uh, into Scion have really been 
AD focus because yep. if you're a pure mage, it's so hard to deal with that. And Sion is able to leave lane whenever he wishes. Yeah, because Vladimir is pretty much stuck trying to battle that uh, cannon minion that's coming down there. 17 minutes into the game, how are we looking? Well, 6,000 gold advances to FPX, two towers to zero. And four kills will not make it a perfect game, but FPX is still just drawing LGD into the chaos, and FPX are frankly just stronger in almost every single trade. Bing, once again, on this Galio, another redemption game for him. 5-0-4 has looked incredible on these plays. And we can talk about FBX's planning for the next five minutes. They do have another Mountain Drake coming up, a very fortunate Drake for them. They pick this one up, go to Baron. They have the Kalista and engage, instant engage with Rengar and Galio. So uh, pick up the Drake, go to Baron, and basically wait to punish. Or Chris with the just engage. Go in. Nicholas will do that one as well, being initiating with the hero's entrance and try a bit of return CC out there. We're not going to happen. That's going to be another chase down onto PYL. Pepper trying to back away, and Chris goes into the perfect timing. Bing stepping up to try and defend his cow. Well, Chris is going to jump in once more. That's oh, absolutely he fine. Oh, and he, he goes back, back in once again. What? You can't get me away from this imp. I want to go in. I Just leave me to die. I want to kill him. LWX now chasing down imp. How this is the Pierce. back as Alistar? There's no way Absolute you Absolute madman. <laughs> He's like, he has the opportunity, Bing opens up a pathway for him to get out, he goes in. He gets pulled out once again by LWX, <laughs> he, he goes, goes in, again. in again. Why? <laughs> and all things done and said, that was actually not a very good play from FPX. They did have a uh, an advantage for Sion to come in before Gimgu, uh, uh, I'm sorry, before Jinu did, but they were doing it 4v4 underneath tower, and that didn't work out very well. Very easy skill shots for Zoe to hit underneath that, uh, underneath that first tower. And it looks okay at the start, you know, they get two members pretty early on, but the rest of the chase just, it didn't make a lot of sense, and they're not for, uh, they're not uh, really progressing their game plan. Man, Crisp is unbelievably bloodthirsty. <laughs> Why would you go in? That's crazy. Oh, we actually get to see Gim Gim come in for the second engage shot. He does end up dying here, up from Palstar, and the damage coming in from Vladimir, so eventually falls. So yes, it was a very sloppy engage there from FPX, so it really just uh, kind of prolonged the game more than anything else. Yeah, that wasn't just sloppy, it was unnecessary, which is yeah. the big point we're trying to make. They should listen to Clement, you know, go for the Mountain uh -huh. Drake, set up on Baron. Instead, they do a 4v4 underneath the enemy mid lane and turret and trade two for one. See, this is a problem though, because this is very much FPX's identity, and at the point where they stopped doing unnecessary plays, and that was actually pretty sweet from Pepper, um, at the point where they stop doing unnecessary plays, they lose their identity as FPX because those unnecessary plays usually turn into something. Amy looking for the gank into the mid lane. Chris does have his ultimate though, so LWX is just going to kill him right here. A, a trade into the jungle once again, so it loses Pepper, but now the chase down to PYL. Great solo for that locks down too, and Chris, he has the ultimate. He's not going to live for much longer, but he can continue to go in. That's what he can do. Now the team's here to try and protect, but that was a fantastic battle nope. star coming in. And the Sleepy Trouble Bubbles, that will be another return kill. A two for three trade, but mid lane tower to FPX. Amy is just uh, completely, he's pretty useless right now. Uh, doesn't really have the HP to survive the, the first wave in. Even though FPX was collapsing at the same time, it didn't really affect how fast Amy died. He pretty much just got two-shotted by LWX right there. And also Imp getting Ooh. caught out by Pepper. Yeah, almost an instant kill, but was able to just survive by kiting away, and that returns into a return kill onto Pepper. Where's PYL in this catches? Uh, I feel like if they were going to go for the mid lane thing, it should have been PYL yeah. falling up instantly. But I guess they, uh, but I guess Imp just got cut out too fast, so they they had to back off. It was just yeah, a series of unfortunate events right there. Also, mid lane tower dying, so FPX get a bunch from that. I uh, also managed to crack a bot lane tower, so. That's probably where the uh, Herald went in the end. Yep, so uh, after eight kills, uh, they're back to doing what I said they would do. Yep. That is <laughs> but we <laughs> do have to have the eight strategy. kills in the middle, you know. Uh, that's just the LGD and FPX identity, I it guess. It is indeed. <laughs> well, that's absolutely fine. I'm, I'm happy to watch a game where they just keep brawling instead of both just sitting back and then going for the play. It's much more entertaining to watch, for sure. Uh, but that's going to be the Mountain Dragon. The next one's also going to be Mountain Dragon around 27 minutes. Uh, and now the Baron also becomes a big objective for both teams. Uh, right now, pretty good control over their own jungle. LGD are at least able to place down a bunch of control was there and uh, wrestle some vision back. Also, Baron has been completely warded out by LGD. So it's a multi-set process for FPX if they want that one. Yeah, they definitely know where the ne next objective is. Uh, I just want to go back on the 
the LPL viewing experience uh, so far. It really has been my favorite league to watch in terms of regular split because <laughs> yeah. our bottom to mid teams, they play at a much faster rate than someone like LCK. You sure. know, LCK, you have your Jin Air teams that mm -hmm. like to drag out to 90 minutes. The casters here actually call those the bladder games because it's not about <laughs> how well you play, it's about how, how well, well you, you can, can hold your, your bladder. bladder. <laughs> so we don't have those. We just have bloody fights over and over again, you know could set up a dragon. Yeah, we could do that, but instead we're going to pick we're up eight kills instead. <laughs> we're just going to fight on the mid lane tower, which is still up. And then fight again on the mid lane tower, and then we'll go towards the dragon. That's, uh, that's the game plan. But LGD right here, they're still getting it done. They're still moving towards this Baron, able to put down the wards, control the area. Um, and Yuki has still picked up kills from this. You know, every single fight that happens, the Zoe eventually will just pick up kills with Paddle Star. Yeah, the problem is that Zoe's going to have a very hard time finding the backline. The only person she's really looking for is LWX on the Kalista. Pepper should be pretty immune with his four stacks and also yeah. just being the initiator. So, a very difficult game for Zoe to actually play well. And also, double Hex Shrink has been picked up on the two targets who could possibly be killed by that. In comes the Scion, though, looking for this gang onto Imp. Doesn't, Doesn't manage to get, get the knock back. Only gets the damage. That was, that was interesting. Uh, Amy the looking to, back looking away to go now. in. Crisp finds Jinu. In comes Pepper. Ultimate down from Bing. Doesn't quite catch Amy. He flashes over the wall. Killed by Proto Belt. That feels pretty bad. Jinu gets a huge amount of damage from Tides of Blood and PYL wants to follow up. Human Play comes down once more. Not going to save the life of the Vladimir though. Double knock him onto Imp and Yuki and Chris looking to back away. Follow up. Wins a ward. Another kill. Three kills now over to FPX. And Yuki once comes again. in. Amy just looks like he's on a different team than LGD, so they could have got out cleanly there with Amy's flash, but instead he Hextech ultimated backwards and uh, kind of goaded his team back into a losing fight. So just weird execution from LGD. Yeah, unfortunately it feels like it's just one of those games, you know, we all have them where you just get tilted and it seems like no matter what you do, you, it's just the wrong play. Even if it is also the wrong play. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks for backing me up there. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> Uh, LGD could have gone away right here. He's, Amy still has his flash. You know, he could just uh, flash away from that. Uh, doesn't decide to do it. Dies to being. Oh, very good by use of belt. belt. Yeah, and this looked like it could be good out from Jinu, but unfortunately he placed down the Human Plague at the end of his combo, so uh, he was too dead to get the healing back. Yeah, these are just free kills going over to FPX. Kills that they didn't necessarily have to have. Yeah. So it just looks a bit weird from LGD. And here we get to see Vladimir versus Cannon Minion. <laughs> Uh, he's got the assistance of Tower, so it's going to speed up the process exponentially. We will see this every 120 seconds. That's the cooldown for yep. Banner of Command. And uh, it adds 600 health to a cannon. Yeah, it's a lot. Uh, there isn't 8.4 yet, so uh, Baron's up. Cannon minion isn't going to be quite as bad on that patch. But it's still pretty bad. Especially that sounds for like a man. huge Scion buff. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty big. Uh, it's actually one of the reasons why Sion is visiting the mid lane nowadays. And mid lane is turning into top lane, Clement, so we'll actually have two lanes we can talk about now. That'll be pretty fun. Yeah. Uh, I think they will have to change Banner of Command at some point. Like, if it just wins you the mid lane, that just feels bad. <laughs> well, it's also not an item you think about until it becomes a problem, you know what I mean? It's just like, yeah. ah yes, Banner of Command, that the item that's picked up the in every single game in League of Legends. The problem about this item is that it's gold efficient without its passive. Yeah. And it's active. It's stat efficient. <laughs> yeah, it's it's actually just gold efficient yeah, yeah. without passive and, and active. So, uh, I know it was originally designed as kind of a support item, but when top laners are able to pick it up and just win against any magic matchup, that yeah. feels bad. Ooh. Well, Ooh, good snipe. Definitely found the target right there. It's going to be the lockdown onto Chris. He'll use the unbreakable will and being looking to back away. He's actually a fairly squishy Galio since he's built essentially full AP right now. And that's essentially it. If you weave the needle, if you keep manage to land the Paddle Star onto the right target, then you can stop the push. Yeah, it just needs that one shot onto Kalista, and they can pull them back. Ah, uh, but unfortunately, LGD Drake have coming out in. of the base. What a oh, wall drift through coming the in tunnel. from Gimgood, right through the goalpost. That was oh. actually sick. That was insane. That was so cool. I'm losing my voice because of it. <laughs> so, so cool. Pepper waiting in the wings. He does have his ultimate, looking for the jump, but we'll just... Uh, Murder some minions. And we do have the uh, the best driver so far. I, originally, the, the first person to really pick up the sign was Duke, who is now an right. IG. He was like the, the OG driver, and back then there was a bug where you could do 90 degrees kind of drifts. 
Yeah, he really uh, I think popularized that's a feature. that. It's not a bug. <laughs> they, they patched it out. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's kind of weird. <laughs> Yeah, you definitely can still do a bit of it though with the old wall drift with Sion. That's going to be an inhibitor falling here for uh, for FPX, and it will be the defense once again for LGD. But uh, yeah, I feel like we do have to give the driver award to someone in the LPL. Who was the last Sion that was pretty good? We saw the Shy. Oh, the Shy was, was, pretty, very that was a pretty good Sion. Probably I think picked it up from the Duke though. Yeah, I think that yeah. was probably the best wall drift I've seen so far in the LPL. The one I just saw from Gimgun. Yeah, yeah. There used to be this uh, bug where you could use your totem. Uh, to change the direction where Sion was facing. Yep. And that was something that <laughs> Duke actually used in Challenger <laughs> for a while. It was hilarious watching him play Sion. Uh, it's just the, it's the sudden, like, sharp angle turned right into mm -hmm. your AD carry. That was amazing to watch, but that doesn't exist anymore in the game. Uh, we still no. have a couple very good drivers, though. You do, you do. Um, yeah, it's, it's a really interesting mechanic for wall drift. Like, it still exists, but the way that you actually have to implement it is you have to, like, flick away from the wall as you're about to make contact. And there's only some walls in which you can do so. Um, there's actually a path from blue side to Baron, which you can you can go through the base gate and go all the way to Baron by pathing through the jungle. It's really difficult to do, but it is actually possible. I encourage everyone to get out their uh, practice tools and start learning Yeah, science. give it a shot. <laughs> it's, a, it's a whole lot of fun. It's a super unique mechanic. Yeah. Don't be like Smep. Uh, you know, Smep's a like good Smep. Scion, but the way he plays it is kind of boring. He doesn't go for the gold yeah. post play. He flashes on top of an AD carry. The point blank. Arc. Yeah. Yeah. Super boring. But I mean, hey, it works. You can chain it into your, into your Q. You get the guaranteed CC. Like, it makes sense. It's just, you're right. It's boring. Yeah. Well, FPX looking for another seed into the top plane now. And LGD stepping up to try and defend. We've got three minions left, so able to clear these out, but that's already over a third down. It's almost down to half right now on, on just one push of minions. Plus, that mid lane is going to become a problem very shortly. Though Zoe actually does a lot of damage. LGD are the ones that have to make the first move here. They need to snipe out LWX before he's allowed to touch the towers. Yeah, and it's essentially down to FPX to uh, play bodyguard right here. I'm pushing into the wave, and here's that cannon minion. So they have here to force this engage. P.O.L. Well tries, the but misses the stun. You're absolutely right, Chris. Stepping forwards, gets the stun down to Amy. That's a lot of damage in return, though. Chris was very low, but the tower's dead. And LWX is kiting around this one. P.Y.L. stepping back. Good damage for the Q. Jinu. Misses out of that one. And look and at the, the damage. Down. Jinu into the back lines. Huge damage from the Paymo play coming out there. Yuki flashing away. Gets another kill with more sparkles. And Gimgun trying to back away They're from this one. But this down one. goes Pepper. And Yuki absolutely popping off right now. Gets another kill. Gimgun trying to escape from the play. Flashes over the wall. Triple kill. And now he's not able to hit anybody. Triple kill in from Yuki. Three kills overall to LGD. Only at the expense of him. Oh, so I, I don't think FPX really planned how they wanted to play in there. So Chris lost most of his HP before they were able to hit the tower, and they didn't use the Rengar Galio combo. Galio, if you look at his ultimate right now, Hero's Entrance left unused yep. throughout that fight. And really, really the, the focus was split. You know, the ultimate comes out for PWL, misses, and like, okay, well, this is going to work out well from FTX, but Chris stays in for a long time. Yeah, look at his, look at his HP. He can't yeah. go in anymore. And then LWX just sets up. But then FPX decide they want to move forwards into a Jinu who gets free access to the back line. <laughs> this is rather unfortunate from Bing. So Bing still has half health, doesn't use his ultimate, decides to go Zhonya's, and LWX was definitely counting on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really, as, as soon as the back line died, it was uh, everyone else is going to quickly follow. Unfortunate flash at the end there as well for Gimgun. He was just about to make it to safety. FBX, you don't need to use your feeding strategy when you're already, when you're already winning. Head. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You just need to do it in the early game, uh, make them throw up, and then, <laughs> and then you can just win. I think we did call it the uh, the, the Clement's cat. Well, you did the, <laughs> the Clement's cat strategy. Yeah. yeah, that's what my cat does. Yeah, feed him irregularly, feed him rapidly, then kind of throws up. And it's, it's already worked, because at the end of the day, you can also find P-Way out trying to find a ward right here. Gimgun backing up and able to stop them. Another knock-up, face call. Knockback as well from Chris, but eventually PYL will fall. Jinu now trying to escape from the play. Oh, Rego Pepper, comes in! Massive Picks ultimate and the follower. Another knock up in from Amy. And Jinu, he's got the five man ultimate. This could be big. Tides of Blood comes in, but he's going to die. And actually, everybody just collapses. It's going to be another kill. LGBX trading off of Amy in the back line. It's not even really a battle. Five for one. And FPX, they actually just clean up the game now. Gimgun using the ultimate to keep the minions alive. And they will move on to the next turrets here. 31 minutes. 
and over that amount of kills in this game, absolutely absurd amount of bloodshed, and FPX turn onto the Nexus after killing all the minions because they need to pad those stats. FPX, the clean sweep over LGD, who do not even pick up a single win over the last two days in their home arena. Going as fast as over a kill a minute. This is the type of fight we expected from FPX and LGD. However, LGD, we have to question, how much fight do they actually have in them? A lot of sloppy mistakes, starting from the level one Amy of Amy basically face river. planting himself into Pepper, and that really set the tone for this game. Zoe, even though she got kills, wasn't able to do anything because she couldn't get into the enemy jungle at all. Yeah, and Yuki tried his best, you know, on that Zoe, got a couple early kills and was able to uh, make these team fights at least look reasonable for LGD, especially when uh, FPX were looking for these very aggressive plays, but in the end it simply wasn't enough. Every other lane had collapsed, there was nothing that Vladimir could do, even though he also tried in those team fights so damn hard. But FPX well deserved battle right there, a 2 and 0, and they maintain their win streak. And LWX really showing another side of him. He's not only the hyper carry, but he can also win lane very hard against the likes of Imp and PYL. And that really has been uh, the kind of the backbone of the team so far. Both of these series, they pick up the Kalissa. They say, hey, we're not going to scale. We know you like to fight a lot. We'll fight with you. And they do win out on the bottom lane. Yeah, this is almost one of the perfect matchups for FPX where they can actually fight a team who also just want to fight and the FPX can win out in those scenarios, especially this with Pepper picking up the early kills, you know, it almost seems so intrinsically tied to how well Pepper does in the early game, but this time he was almost spoon-fed those kills, you know, and then he's able to go from lane to lane, make all this happen for them, and all in all, just well played to FPX. A great return to form for FPX. They are on a three-match win streak so far, and I think the most important thing is Bing is looking a lot better. Mm. Like we said before, he's tried the Azir, he's tried the Galio before, but it didn't look as good and clean as it did today. Yeah, his uh, his play on both of those champions looked so, so good. The Azir, unkilled, Galio as well, perfect timing on all of those ultimates, the synergy out with his jungler. Pepper was also just on point in these team fights. So big turnarounds. If he can actually start transitioning some of that play into what we've uh, seen them play up against some of the stronger teams uh, looking towards WE and EDG when they get back into their own conference, uh, we could look at a much stronger FPX a few weeks down the line. Yeah, this team is definitely one that I, I feel like could go over WE and could go over BLG when they go back mm. to their own conference. So things are not done yet for them. They have been sitting on sixth place for a long time, but with yep. OMG kind of sliding even further backwards, I think they really are knocking on the door of playoffs. Yeah, for sure. Able to maybe sneak in there as well because some of these teams, as you said, have either been stagnating or you know starting to go down as well. So FPX, if they maintain that, especially because they have a couple more games left in cross conference, they will be able to pick up hopefully a couple more wins for themselves, but so far, just really good development out from that squad. Yeah, very much. Uh, really uh, showing their potential that we hype them up for at the start of the season. And I think with the uh, with being on form, then that really unlocks Pepper to do a lot more invades, and that's going to yeah. be the key point for this team later For sure, on. because, you know, Bing wasn't really winning his lane, and now can actually try and buff up that early game. So good stuff from FPX. That's going to do it from us, though, myself, and Clement. We're going to send it over to the analyst desk to take a look at that series. Bing is, in fact, not his name in Chinese. Bing in Chinese means ice. That dude was on fire in that game, too. The three-man taunt. This guy was all over the place. I going, no idea where you were going. I'm death sorry. Cap. <laughs> Stay with me. We'll bring it back. Rabidon's death cap. Magi's soul stealer. Yeah. Protobel. Yeah. You, you can't do that. That's the Galio build that Galios dream of when they lay awake at night wishing they had picked a different champion. Yes. But he got to play it. In a pro game against the likes of LGD, and it worked. It was huge. But okay, let's I'm get let's get let's, back to the beginning. The whole draft. Though. Let's start let's with the whole draft. the whole draft. Not just being in the mid lane. I actually want to start with LGD first. So we'll start with the losing side before we get excited about how good FBX were able to draft and play in that first uh, second game, particularly Bing. Mm. LGD had a decent composition. It looked a bit disconnected because there was one tank, and the one tank was a Leona, and it was the support. So there was a lot of squishy members running around elsewhere on the map. Vladimir top lane, you know, you've got your Camille in the jungle, which is something that I definitely disliked from Amy in the draft phase. Sejuani was available. This guy doesn't really play carries. He plays Ivern. Think of Ivern <laughs> when you think of Amy, and then think of an Ivern that is a pacifist picking Camille and just be confused for a second with me. <laughs> That's how I felt by it, right? The rest of the composition was great. So if we disregard the top half of the map and you think about the three that they have down there, Leona, Varus, and Zoe, pit composition, mid-range, long-range, high damage, fantastic synergy when they work together. Really liked that part of their composition. And then, of course, 
there was the other side, Dom, which was actually just a great composition in different ways. Yeah. Because their 2v2s, their skirmishes were outstanding. When you have the Galio Rengar composition that we saw utilized a wealth of times in that last game, you're like, okay, major positive. Really like that composition. It really did look almost like a bit of, I, I hesitate to say, desperation for the likes of LGD to hunt down down those opportunities when we saw the rotation top to match the fact that they lost their bottom lane LGD that is and then moving into the jung uh, sorry the river in front of Harold to look for a pick it was a pretty close matchup because Yuki was able to get in and do some damage there they ended up losing the fight but then LGD just turned around and did the same thing again the yep. Rengar Galio combo just locking down any attempted picks we're in the boxing ring it was yeah. just different rounds in the exact same arena like <laughs> it didn't work the first time let's go to the exact same spot and do it again. Exactly. Like, surely it'll be better this time. They didn't get extra kills and get super far ahead. Oh, no, we're dead. Round three. <laughs> no problem. Let's go one more time. It continued to happen. And that's the thing that I didn't really understand about LGD. And Fun Plus Phoenix, because they were getting kills, you know what? That's okay. Yes, there was better decisions for them to make. They could have been doing something else on the map and snowballing the map. But LGD are meeting them in the middle, and they're coming out better for it. So keep meeting them until they decide to stop mm -hmm. and continue that game plan through. And this is where we listened, uh, sorry, heard from Clement and Pulse mentioning that FPX, this is a matchup that they favor. They want the team to come and fight them wherever they get the opportunity. And as you mentioned with the tank composition, sure, the carries died a few times, LWX and Pepper uh, getting caught out of position or perhaps mispositioning in the duration of those longer fights. But Gimgoon, Bing, and Crisp were playing so sharp. Yes. I mean, the fact that we saw Crisp flash a wall behind the tier one and come in, here's actually Bing getting the three man taunt and then just look at the damage. That's a Galio. Yeah. That's a Galio one hitting as well, right? When we talk about what is the, the moment that LGD said, okay, we've had enough boxing in the exact same <laughs> ring. This was the moment when a Galio comes in 1v3, one hits your AD carry, and the rest of the team of Fun Plus Phoenix are able to walk it over. Of course, Bing does get man of the match as well. Very much deserved from his performance. And we said one thing, Dom, after the first game, and it was, what do we want from Bing to even somehow be better than a 10-0-14 showing? Mm -hmm. I think he showed us exactly that. He didn't just stay in lane, he left lane. He did it at the right times. He contributed and he was drafted for the team composition. And then besides one mistake inside LGD's base, he played it immaculately. He certainly did. Uh, of course, we do have to mention the fact that LGD, the sleeping dragon, it, it almost brings me back to like 2015, 2016 style where they play up to the level of their opponents. And if it's a low quality team, they play poorly. But if yes. it's a high quality <laughs> team, they play very well. With FEX kind of in the middle of the pack, I think we saw a little bit of a low tier and then transitioning up towards high tier at the end of game two, but it just, it wasn't enough. I mean, LGD were ready for the bar fight. They were fully prepared were. to take the bar fight, but then there's just these, like, when LGD were in their prime back in 2015, there was still a weakness and it was yes. a very obvious weakness. And would you believe it? It's the exact same position <laughs> that is still considered weak. Back then it was Lee Sin for TBQ. If he doesn't have that, he loses the game. He is weak and now he's a big weak point that gets exploited. They went to Worlds, Lee Sin was band guess what he lost a lot yeah same thing here with amy and this just amy just triggers me to no end honestly like how are you losing game is camille zero six and think to yourself mana crystal sheen that's my next item that's going to help me win the game i mean it's a conversation that has to be had about the likes of lgd if they want to continue to grow and develop as a team um but of course that being said we've got our match of the week coming up in just a few minutes ladies and gentlemen do not touch your browser because we're going to be right back with that matchup